come off the court. He had the four personal fouls. He looked pretty frustrated. Um, did you say something to him to kind of to lift his spirits? Were you and Eric sort of talking to him during this game to help him with his frustrations? Um, yeah. I mean, I try to find value uh, anywhere I can uh, on the team. You know, there's more facets to being a championship team or being a competitive team than just, you know, being on the floor. And so, like I said in the last interview I did, man, that kid's 19 years old. Um, it's the NBA. It's the best league in the world. So many people are out there criticizing him, and I just don't understand it. And I'm going to stand on my words. Like, he's at the pinnacle of his his profession. So I just feel like if you're not at the pinnacle of your profession, then why are you out here criticizing a 19-year-old kid? And so uh, I just stay in his ear, man. I tell him to have fun. He's worked so hard. Um, his family has sacrificed so much, you know, for him to get to this point and achieve his dream. Um, it's hard. Like I said, it's the NBA. It's the best league in the world. You're going to have ups and downs, and it's a learning curve for him. And so I just always continue to tell him to smile. Like, I'm still learning, you know, how to play in this league and, <clears throat> and so much more. So uh, just enjoy it. Have fun. Uh, because the fact of the matter is you don't know how long you're going to be playing basketball, you know. Uh, I would never, ever use anybody else in the, as an example. So for myself, you know, my career could end tomorrow. Um, it could end the next day. And so I just want to go out having fun every time I step on that floor because it's fun. You know, we've worked so hard to play in the NBA, play on TV, make great money and everything else that comes with it. So, you know, it's a game. You're going to have bad days sometimes. You're going to lose some games. And so uh, he'll be all right, man. Like I said, and I'm going to stand on my words, that kid's going to be a monster in years to come. <clears throat> Juan, how does your mindset change, if at all, when, when you're starting in place of Draymond Green versus coming off the bench? Uh, for me, I don't know. I don't know if it's easier to start. I don't know if it's easier to come off the bench. I just know what's expected of me. Um, I know who I am as a player, and so I know what uh, I bring to the table. And so, uh, like I always say, I want to be consistent. I want my coaches and my teammates to know what they're going to get from me. Uh, luckily tonight I made shots, but you know, who cares about the shots? I had some good steals, uh, had some good defensive rotations, whatever. We still lost. We got to be get better. Um, so, you know, um, sometimes when you're coming off the bench, you're jumping into the flow of the game and it's kind of hard to catch a rhythm sometimes. Uh, I don't know. I'm just, like I said, I just try to bring to the table what I know I'm capable of. How much thought in the first quarter did you put into that dunk? You went with the windmill. Did you put anything <laughs> in your mind about what you're going to do? How did that play out? Uh, it's my first fast break. I want to, like, you know, just me on the break. And, you know, uh, I'm still a kid when it comes to this. I still, you know, lay in my bed at night and visualize certain things. And I always just, you know, visualize me being on a fast break and, you know, just doing something exciting. And so that's why people are tuning in, right? They're, they want to watch exciting plays. And so I had the opportunity to do something cool, and I went with it. 